Okay, my name is Doreen. I just graduated. I was a Sloan Fellow 2018. I came here from Zimbabwe and I did an independent study with Anjali Sastri. So I had a 10 years work experience in accounting and finance before I came to Sloan. And I had this passion for agriculture that stemmed from growing up um, in Zimbabwe with parents that were farmers. So I had done quite a bit of research uh, personally on, on agriculture everywhere that I had worked. And even though I was working in finance, I tried to kind of uh, make sure that I did some agriculture work, whether it was majors and acquisitions or whatever, try to make sure that I infused agriculture into my work. So when I got here, I wanted to kind of formalize this passion um, and, you know, do a bit more in-depth analysis, in-depth research on this sector and where, what I wanted to contribute to it after graduation. So I did an independent study titled um, Innovations Across the Agriculture Value Chain, an Opportunity for Savvy Entrepreneurs, because I want to be an entrepreneur in the sector. Um, so the independent study involved researching um, kind of the current value chain uh, or the traditional value chain as it is, and then uh, interviewing different stakeholders to figure out where opportunities are for innovation. And that's what I worked on with Anjali. So I, had, I started out with some uh, questions that I wanted to answer. Um, or some hypothesis, and I, you know, and 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 the main one was the fact that uh, there was there's a big opportunity to do value addition, and so to move, you know, farmers from the traditional farming and 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 raw material production to actual um, processing of items of consumer goods, you know, whether it's juice or you know um, personal care items, anything that can be produced from agricultural produce, from excess agricultural produce. So um, my hypothesis was that everybody on the table kind of would agree with the, you know, with the statement that that is the only way to move farmers or rural communities from poverty to prosperity. And um, that's where all the, you know, that's where most of the investments should be going forward. So I started with that question, and so when I interviewed stakeholders, I interviewed farmers, I interviewed uh, business people, I interviewed uh, development uh, organizations, and kind of asked questions that kind of uh, questioned, poked on that hypothesis or supported it. And um, the response was actually what, what I expected, which is, it's true that that is, you know, where everybody thinks that the investment should be focused on. It's just a matter of changing some existing mental models that um, keep both farmers and investors in this sector kind of stuck in, in doing things as they've always been done. I, I looked at all the things that I was interested in, things that I was passionate about, but that I wasn't necessarily um, addressing through my MBA classes at Sloan. And so, you know, agriculture stood out. And then within agriculture, I kind of looked at what was related to my startup, uh, which is, you know, what I'm hoping to work on after, now that I've graduated. And so, you know, it was kind of easy to, 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 to narrow down a topic because I wanted something that was aligned with my startup and my interests. Managing the work uh, and myself was probably the most difficult. <laughs> um, I think, like I said, because I had kind of done some research on the topic without really having you know, any, any plans of using it in any formal way. I thought that I underestimated the time it would take to actually come up with something meaningful. And so, and I, I, I you know, I like to talk, I'm a people person, so I enjoyed the interviewing part and I, you know, I kept gathering information and gathering information and talking to people more than the people I had on my list. 
But then when it came to coming, you know, to like kind of gathering the insights and writing um, what I had done and why I had done it and what the next steps are, it was kind of difficult. And also I had a full cost load uh, because I spent all of my IAP doing this research. And so I didn't take any other classes on any units um, that I needed towards graduation. So in the spring, everything was kind of due. The independent study, all the courses and, and, and all of that. So it was difficult, but um, I mean, I worked with Anjali a lot in trying to figure out how I needed to craft the paper. Um, and so we did a few, you know, iterations of that. She actually is very hands-on, so she'll take post-it notes and write, you know, this say first section could be this, do you agree? What are you trying to get from there? So she kind of pushed me a bit and asked me questions that helped me figure out the structure of the paper. And also the time I would spend on each section and what was more important and what was less important and how I, you know, like just, I can show that I actually did the work. So, you know, because doing the work and actually reporting the work is, is quite different. Um, but yeah, in the end it worked, definitely with Angelis help and, you know, working extra hours. So I think this experience was interesting for me because um, I ended up using frameworks in, in the independent study that I think are unique to Sloan. So for example, I used the, um, I use systems thinking, which is, you know, obviously a big thing here at Sloan, and also kind of things around sustainability and sustainability-oriented innovation, which is MIT, which MIT is, you know, a champion in. So I think that being in this environment kind of helped, um, kind of helped f f uh, with the, the frameworks I was, I was going to use and, and the, the the way I, I, I was writing this paper, entrepreneurship is also big at MIT, so that's why I even want to be an entrepreneur after a 10-year career in finance. So I think all of those things kind of worked together to, um, to help me produce this independent study. I do think, however, it's, you know, it's, it's just, yes, it, for me it was MIT, but for anyone else it could be anything, right? It's just a matter of figuring out what you have in your own ecosystem and then using that to your advantage. Also, in addition to being a Sloan Fellow, I'm a Legatum Fellow, which is, uh, Legatum is a center here at MIT for entrepreneurship and um, development. And it supports 20 fellows per year um, that want to work in the developing world after graduation. So it's everybody from PhDs in engineering to, you know, undergraduates. And so um, I came here through a scholarship from the Legatum Foundation. So it helped me. So I knew coming in that I wanted to be an entrepreneur in the developing world after Sloan. So, you know, and, and my, my, my startup idea is in agriculture. So it kind of, you know, it's another part of what, what, created this uh, independent study. I knew some people that I interviewed in the, you know, that I interviewed, some stakeholders that I interviewed through Legatum, and then approaching them as a Legatum fellow, it kind of made sense that I was doing this, you know, agriculture uh, paper. So it kind of helped me, you know, talk to people that I probably would have a hard time um, reaching out to. Anjali also brought in her contacts for people that I, I, I needed to interview. So that was helpful as well. Um, and, and the name MIT was helpful as well. So I guess to, to kind of link back to the ecosystem, right? So uh, reaching out to someone and saying, hey, I'm a student at MIT and I'm studying this topic was, I think, helpful for people to um, open up their doors and, and resources and, and such. I just came from a conference last week after graduation. I went straight to a conference at the World Bank. And it's just this, I think everybody's kind of questioning this idea of does technology actually, um, is technology a good solution? And if so, how should we be using it? And how do we really get these ru rural communities to, to prosper? You know, and um, there's a lot actually in between uh, farming seasons, right? So, you know, farming season could be just three months or, you know, and, and then you add the, the preparation time, which is another couple of months. And then, you know, farmers are going from cycle to cycle 
and not really, um, their conditions are not really improving. So people are questioning why that, it, that is happening and what, do we, what we need to do uh, more of or less of. So I think that you know, it's an exciting sector because I think that the whole world is wor worried about food security. The whole world is worried about climate change, which is linked to, to agriculture. So I think you know, it's a hot topic. It's just people need to figure out, everybody needs to be on board in terms of figuring out what needs to be done. Because on one hand, you have people that are investing in more production um, of food so that we have food security. But then is that food um, distributed equally? You know, that, that remains to be seen. And then on the other hand, you know, there's all this talk about climate change and, and what farmers should be doing or not be doing. And there are all these technologies that people are coming up with. But are they being co-created with the communities? Probably not. And so uptake of those technologies is slower than people think. So there's, there are all these you know, topics, all these, these loose ends that need to be figured out. And I think that's why it's exciting for me to, to, you know, to be in. And hopefully, I can figure out a small part of it.